Good evening. Um, tonight we're going to go off at quite a tangent and just do a little bit of investigation into a, one tiny aspect of the career of uh, the immortal Claude Debussy, French composer and genius and uh, everybody likes uh, his music pretty well. Uh, I'm no exception. And uh, one particular anecdote uh, which is repeated very widely, uh, occurred in the year 1905. In that year, he spent several weeks uh, on the south coast of England in Eastbourne, Sussex, uh, because they did have some problems uh, back home in Paris and um, you know, marital upsets, and he'd come uh, to England with his uh, new love, uh, Emma Bardac, and they were staying in the hotel in Eastbourne and he was correcting proofs of some work or other. Um, but one morning they went for a walk along the promenade and on a bandstand they heard a, uh, a band playing a, a type of music that had just arrived from the USA. It was the Cape Walk and um, later uh, Debussy incorporated element or an element of what he heard into his children's corner suite uh, in the Gollywogs Cape Walk. Now the children's corner suite was published in 1908 um, but I think he was working on it or noting ideas for it and he picked up this idea um, in England. So just let's look at the beginning of the Gollywogs Cape Walk to see if we can perhaps even find out what that band was playing, which particular cakewalk tune was that band playing um, on that day in July or August 1905. Well, I mean, to be honest, um, we're using a sledgehammer to crack a walnut because I actually think I know what that band was playing on that day and I should just tell you, so there you are, end of story. Um, but we do have to have a bit of evidence to, you know, sort things out and I thought that might be quite interesting to show you and I won't be too long, I promise. Well, we're going to be on the computer monitor screen quite a bit. I hope you can see it. Um, and uh, my knowledge of musical notation is extremely limited. Um, but I've downloaded this program called MuseScore, which is a free program with uh, no strings attached. And um, I'm getting along with it really well. So if you need something like that, I would re uh, recommend this program. Um, and of course, it's MIDI, so that the music is very uh, sparse and dead. But uh, that actually helps us in our search. Now here, after the introduction, this is the critical bit of the Gollywogs Cakewalk. And this is uh, played by a so-called violin. Again. Well, we all know that backwards and forwards, um, but we need to look at it because is this something that the band in Eastbourne might have played that Debussy thought was fun and copied uh, or borrowed or adapted for use in his Gollywogs Cakewalk? Um, well, um, we investigated this and I remembered a bit of something uh, and now I don't think it is and the reason for that uh, I'll show you now. Well if this were a court of law I would now introduce the following piece of evidence um, which is um, a short extract uh, near the end of the first movement of the Debussy string quartet uh, bars 143 to 146. This is MIDI it's expressionless but uh, just let's hear it. Sounds like a wrong note somewhere at the end, but that would be me, not uh, Debussy. <laughs> well, so what? You've just got a emasculated caricature of 
four bars of the marvellous string quartet. But uh, if we take a closer look at it, um, we might find something interesting. Here's a cut down version of it. No viola, no cello, and everything that the first and second violin plays uh, in these bars has been suppressed. So what have we got now? So there we have um, a phrase which appears four times and um, you know what use is it to us? Well, um, there we are. La da 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 da. It's, it's very good, but if you speed it up and swing it a bit, it goes um, la da 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 ba bum ba bum ba bum. So there is uh, a highly likely genesis of the melody of the Gollywogs Cakewalk. Well, alas, um, the String Quartet was published in 1893, so that phrase of Debussy was, uh, you know, well known to him at that time, and doubtless to to to, to many others who'd heard the quartet. Um, so it's no use looking for any influence uh, from a cakewalk in the melody, because the melody would appear to be, I suggest, pure Debussy, and um, over ten years old at the time, uh, he reused it in the Gollywogs Cakewalk, which he often did, uh, and copied other things, uh, which he was also noted for. Um, so where does that leave us? Well, if we take away the, uh, the melody, since that was Debussy, uh, we're left with the rhythm. Played here on a, a marimba. Well, there's the rhythm of it, and um, it's not a particularly elaborate or um, involved rhythm. Um, in fact, it's actually extremely simple. Um, and uh, we need to ask ourselves, is there any possible candidate um, for a cakewalk which uh, employs that rhythm? Um, and I have a feeling that you're thinking that I'm going to tell you one that has, and you are absolutely right. Because in 1899 in New York, and this sheet of music comes from the excellent Lester Levy collection at uh, Johns Hopkins University, which I use a lot and recommend to you. Um, in the USA, a chap called Abe Holtzman published a cakewalk called Smoky Mokes. And um, what do you know? And here is the first four bars of the first theme of Smoky Mokes, played on a synthetic violin. And again. Well, I think we can um, use as a working hypothesis that uh, when Emma Bardak and Debussy went for a walk that morning, uh, they heard a military band, uh, or possibly a brass band, but probably a military band, playing uh, Smoky Mokes. And it was really popular. It spread here very quickly. It was recorded in, in the UK in 1900 by the visiting American banjoist Vess Osman, uh, but it was recorded subsequently many times. Uh, my grandfather loved to play a, a bit of the piano, and he was born in 1882, and Smoky Mokes was one of his favourites. He learnt all the kind of big hits in his teenage and uh, you know early years and he would play Hiawatha and uh, Whistling Rufus and then uh, the Brooklyn Cakewalk which is a British cakewalk which was very popular at the time and has completely disappeared now uh, but uh, Smoky Mokes, Whistling Rufus and all that lot are still around so I think uh, well that's it so um, all we need to do is to uh, end up with a couple of musical examples and um, that's it for now bye